Multivariable Calculus Part 14. My name is Bill Kinney. We've been doing lots of calculations with parametric curves. In this video we want to focus on doing an exact calculation. Find the exact minimum speed along a parametric curve. We'll also find the exact moment in time when that occurs. We will do an approximate calculation as well. We'll approximate with Mathematica how far the object has traveled along the parametric curve. In Part 15 we will find an exact distance traveled. Uh, we'll do an integral then to find the exact distance traveled. And then in part 16, a couple videos from now, we're going to be doing something a little different, though we'll still be using parametric curves. I've been following the second edition of Multivariable Calculus by John Rogoski, and basically, so far, we've done the first couple sections of Chapter 11. In Part 16, I want to get into the third section of Chapter 11, which is technically about polar coordinates. However, I still want to think of it in terms of calculations with parametric curves, and you can do so. Here's the example for this video. We want to find the exact value of the minimum speed of the particle that's got a trajectory defined by this function that you see here. C of t is a point valued function of t. t is time. This is telling you the x, y coordinates of a point as a function of time. f and g are the x and y coordinates individually and they are given by these expressions. I'm thinking about this for values of t greater than or equal to zero. We're also going to find the exact moment in time when that minimum speed is achieved and also estimate how far the particle has traveled up to that moment in time. To get a little feel for what's going on, I'm going to enter some Mathematica code to visualize what's going on. This code is something that I've explained in previous videos. I'm not going to explain it now. We've got the parametric curve in the upper left corner, the purple curve that you see there, that's the parametric curve. The black dot is the particle as it moves. You can see that's moving through the xy plane as time goes by. We've got three other graphs. What's the graph in the upper right? Notice how the axes are labeled, t and y. y is a function of t here. That's the g of t, the second coordinate of this point, giving you the vertical position of the particle as a function of time. Look at the lower left corner here. You see an x here. You should look at this with your head sideways. Turn it at a 90 degree angle clockwise. This is giving you x as a function of t. I wasn't able to get the t to show up here. It is giving you the left-right horizontal position of the particle. First it moves left, then it moves right, just like this function first decreases, then increases. Down the lower right here, we've got two graphs. The uh, At any moment in time, the red graph is giving you the instantaneous speed of the particle at that moment in time, and the blue graph is giving you the distance traveled from time zero to time t. The red graph is the derivative of the blue. It gives you the slopes of the blue. And the blue graph is an antiderivative of the red. It happens to go through the origin. It gives you the area under the red from time 0 to time t. All right, let's focus on our exact calculation here. You should have a piece of paper out and be ready to do these calculations on your own. Again, here is the function c of t is f of t comma g of t up there. We want to use this formula right here to find the speed. You should do that right now and simplify as much as possible. And here's what you should get when you do that. You should get the square root of 36 minus 32t squared plus 9t to the fourth, or maybe you wrote those things under the square root in the opposite order. We would now like to minimize this. This is the function we want to minimize. It turns out to be a little bit easier, not much, but a little bit easier, to define a new function, I'll call it phi of t, that is the square of the speed, and minimize that function itself. Think about why that might be a little simpler. You're going to get rid of the square root, which is going to mean you won't have to use the chain rule. That'll make it a little bit simpler, not much, but a little bit. Think about that that will work, though. If you find the value of t where the squared speed is minimized, that will be the same as the value of time where the speed itself is minimized because the square root function is monotone increasing. So whenever the inside is minimized, the square root itself of that will be minimized as well. And we want to use calculus tools here. I want to take the derivative of the squared speed function, phi of t. The derivative phi prime of t, that will be 36 t to the third minus 64t. I want to set this equal to 0 and solve for t, so it will be helpful to factor it. I can factor out a 4t, and I'll be left with 9t squared minus 16. This can be factored um, even more. 
Um, I hope you realize you can factor this as 4t times 3t minus 4 times 3t plus 4. Okay, you could also just, if we want to set this equal to 0 and solve for t, you get t equals 0 as one of the roots. You also are going to get t equals plus or minus 4 thirds as the other two roots. Those are going to be the critical points of phi. They will also be critical points of the original speed function. We're only concerned about non-negative values of t for t greater than or equal to 0. The critical points are t equals 0 and t equals 4 thirds. All right, let's test the value of this function at those critical points. So I'll calculate phi of 0. Plug that into phi. I could also plug it into the speed function. You're going to get 36, so the speed would be 6. And what about plugging 4 thirds in? Okay, you should take the time, pause the video, and calculate phi of 4 thirds on your own. I will have Mathematica do it for me to save some time here. Do it with fractions, after an exact answer. You should get 68 ninths. 68 ninths, um, a little bit less than 8. That would be what? Uh, 7 and 5 ninths, about 7.5 repeating would be an exact formula for that. That's going to be smaller than 36. Is this a minimum? Well, you can, use, you can verify that it's a local minimum for sure. You can use either the first or second derivative test. If you use the first derivative test, you can verify that the first derivative here, this quantity, is going to change signs, S-I-G-N-S-S, -S, <clears throat> from negative to positive as t passes through 4 thirds. You could also use the second derivative test and verify that the second derivative at t equals 4 thirds is positive so that the graph is concave up there. And you could also graph it overall. This will be the exact minimum value of the squared speed. This is the exact moment in time, 4 thirds. What is the exact squared, minimum squared speed? It would be the square root of this. So our answer, we've got answers to two questions. The exact min speed will equal the square root of 68 ninths, which would be the square root of 68 over 3. Uh, this can be simplified. 68 is 17 times 4. Square root of 4 is 2. I can write this as 2 square root of 17 over 3. And yes, you can approximate it if you want. And the exact moment in time for the min speed, that'll be 4 thirds. Okay, there's our answers to those questions. We should confirm this quickly with the graph. Do this quick. Does it look right? Is that speed looking like it's minimized, first of all, at 4 thirds? 4 thirds is 1.3 repeating. That looks like right about there. Looks pretty good. Is the actual minimum speed equal to this? You can't tell that exactly, but what is this approximately? Well, square root of 68 again was um, 7.5 repeating. Um, excuse me, 68 ninths was 7.5 repeating. If we take the square root of that, we're going to get a little less than 3. Is the min value a little less than 3? Looks reasonable. All right, so we found, I believe we found the right answers here. What about the distance traveled? We can only approximate that with n integrate. Distance traveled from time 0 to time 4 thirds is about 6.181. That'll be our distance traveled up to the moment in time where the min speed is achieved. All right, here's your exercise. And by the way, the min speed is achieved close to where this uh, curve is curving most tightly there, which makes some intuitive sense. Here's your exercise. It's a very similar question. In fact, it's basically the same thing, except now I have an arbitrary A in here where A is positive. You want to do the exact same kinds of things. This is a harder problem because A is unspecified. I've got a lot of detail here in my work that you should um, take the time to look over. I'm about to show you, but you should try it on your own. Pause the video before you do. All right, I'm about to show you my work. Here it is. 
Ultimately, the speed function as a function of t can be simplified to this expression, where a is a positive constant. We can minimize the squared speed to find out where that speed is minimized. Um, here is the derivative of the squared speed factored out. One critical point always occurs at t equals zero, and there's going to be two more real critical points when a is bigger than two-thirds. Um, and when a is less than two-thirds, then there's only one critical point. The positive root there, square root of 3a minus 2 over 3, that'll be the positive value of t that's a critical point when a is bigger than 2 thirds. Turns out you can verify it's a minimum. The second derivative, for example, is positive there. You can use the second derivative test. You can also graph it and see that there's a global minimum there. The global minimum speed when a is less than or equal to 2 thirds is is a at time 0. And then when a is bigger than 2 thirds, it turns out the global minimum speed is this quantity right there. Uh, the distance traveled uh, can't be found exactly in terms of elementary functions. Here there's a way to represent it as an integral, um, but you can't really simplify that in terms of elementary functions, and we have to leave it at that then. Here's some Mathematica code that can confirm these calculations. You can look this over. I'll scroll down slowly. I'm finally now going to show you a graph. It's a similar graph but I'm going to have two animation parameters, not only the time, but also the A in the formula. We can see time go by and see the different kinds of graphs you get, and we can change the A and see how the graphs are changing. When A is large, this is the kind of picture you get. When A is small, close to zero, you get a different kind of picture. I also, just as a matter of interest, figured out a graph for the distance traveled as a function of a up to the minimum speed and it turns out to be a piecewise function just as a point of interest this is the distance traveled to the time of the min speed when a is less than two-thirds at zero because the time of min speed is at time equals zero and then it increases when a is bigger than two-thirds um, it, again it's a graph of the distance traveled I had to use any integrate to do it and I'll end the video right there